What is going on guys, Paul James here, and right now we are standing in front of, or in the backyard of, my Airbnb property. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain to you how to make passive income on Airbnb. Now this works even if you don't have a property right now, I'm gonna get into that, how to do all of that, even if you don't have money to buy a property, you can actually still do this. And that's what I'm gonna explain in today's video. If you ain't beef, so the reason why I'm making this video is because recently my wife and I, we purchased this house at the beginning of this year. It's here in Orlando, Florida. And what we did was we purchased a house because we come down here and vacation all the time. And it just made sense for us to do that. And then when we're not here, we go ahead and we put this up on short-term rental sites. Now this doesn't just work on Airbnb. Actually, it will work on all the short-term rental sites like HomeAway, Verbo, um, and then of course Airbnb is probably the most popular one. And it's a great little strategy to make passive income. I'm gonna talk about some of the pros and cons as we get into this video because there's a lot of upside to this business model, but there's also some downside, which of course we're learning about, and I'm gonna explain that. So if you're not subscribed yet, I talk a lot about strategies like this, about passive income and building businesses and just kind of getting out of the nine to five grind. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, you should drop below right now and hit the subscribe button so that you can join me in future videos. But anyways, let's go ahead and dive in and talk about this entire business model well step one is obviously you're gonna need some sort of property to rent and you can obviously not just do a whole property like you could do a spare bedroom even I think a lot of people overlook that but if you've got a room in your house that is just being unused you can actually go and you can turn that into a space that you could go and rent on short-term rental sites like Airbnb um, otherwise, you can do what we did and find a property that's in an area that people want to rent in. So around here, the, again, this is the Orlando, Florida area, people are going to all the theme parks, Disney World, Universal Studios. So we picked a house that was kind of around those areas so that it would be hot for rental markets. Now, if you don't have money to buy a property, which I know a lot of people out there don't, there's a cool little strategy where you can go and you can rent a property. So just like you would rent a property for yourself, you go and you rent a property, but you don't live in it. You rent it and you use it for the purposes of renting it out on Airbnb. So for example, you might pay $900 a month to rent that property from the apartment manager or the house manager or whoever it is. And then you list it on Airbnb, let's say for $300 a night. And I mean, you're making rental income there. Even if you only rent it, you know, five, six, seven times a month you're gonna way exceed what you're paying for rent there and that's some nice passive income. Well, it can be passive and that's what we're gonna jump into in this video. Now, there is a caveat to that if you're going to rent a property in order to do this for Airbnb, you need to check the rental agreement of your lease or your, your rental agreement. And it's gonna say on there, if you can't do this, it'll say that you cannot sublease it. So that's the clause you're looking for. If you get a property and you sign a lease that says that you can't sublease, you're gonna run into problems. You're not gonna be able to rent it out on short-term rental sites like Airbnb. So just look for that. As long as you don't see no subleasing in the agreement, you're good to go. Well, the first biggest task of actually getting started in this business is step number two, and that's gonna be furnishing the space. Whether it's just something as small as a spare bedroom in your house, you're still gonna have to go out there, you're gonna have to buy a bed for it, maybe it's a desk to put there, you know, different decorations for the wall, or if it's like our case, we had to spend about two months furnishing this place and adding some unique things to the house, which I will explain about. So. Number one with that is, and we're on step two of how to do passive income with Airbnb, but number one with this step of furnishing it is, I highly encourage you, this is what we did, is go on Airbnb and check out some of the other listings in the area that have a lot of reviews and that are getting rented. You know, you'll actually be able to see if they're, if they're vacant or if they're getting a lot of occupancy. And what we did was we went and kind of modeled those listings. We went and saw, what kind of furniture they were putting in the houses, what kind of different things they were doing. But then what you wanna do is you wanna step it up a notch from that even, and you wanna do something a little creative to add a creative twist to it. I'm gonna show you that right now. Let's go head upstairs. I'm gonna share, share with you one of the bedrooms of our Airbnb house here and what we did to kind of separate ourselves from the competition. So you may have seen this in one of my other videos, but when we got to our Airbnb property this time, um, the wallpaper in this room was coming down. This is our Harry Potter themed room. 
So what we did in this property here was we decided to make it unique from the other houses in the area by creating an entire room themed around the Harry Potter train station. You can see we've got like the suitcases, the luggage on the wall, um, the bird cage, and then we've got a fake brick wall. Now this brick wall was actually just wallpaper. It was pretty easy to put up, although it did fall down because we're from Wisconsin, so we're not used to like the super humid weather here and the humidity really took its toll on this wallpaper so we've just spent some time putting it back up with some uh, wallpaper adhesive and that seemed to work just fine but you can see we've added some cool accents to the room uh, like the lamps and the pillows and the, the bed sheets and even the curtains and decals on the wall and of course this this wall here is really decked out with the brick but this is something that's going to pop on an airbnb listing and it's going to separate us from the competition when Someone comes here and they see this whole Harry Potter themed room. If they like Harry Potter, they're gonna want our house over the competition. So try and think of something like that that can separate you. It doesn't have to be like a themed room, but it could be something, you know, if you're in a different area, it could be like a beach themed room or something like that. That's gonna really make you pop and separate from the competition. So look at what the competition is doing, model and emulate them, but then step it up a notch. All right, let's get into step three of creating passive income with Airbnb, and that is the automation factor. This is where we actually talk about how we're gonna make this passive. So one of the first things that you should do on your Airbnb property that you're gonna go for if you're doing a whole property versus just a bedroom, is you should invest in one of these smart thermostats. So we picked the Nest thermostat here. Um, and what that allows us to do is when we're not here, because we go back home and we're all the way across the country, like 1,300 miles away, uh, we're able to still monitor the temperature here and make sure that the units are running. We know at all times if the air is running, the furnace is running. Um, today it's 63 degrees here. So we actually could be using the furnace in this property, but normally it's the air conditioner and normally it runs nonstop when there's people here. So that's number one that I would recommend investing in. Let me go show you number two that I would recommend investing in to make this stuff passive. The next thing you wanna invest in is one of these smart locks right here. What this allows you to do is it gives you an app on your phone that when you rent the house to someone, you can generate a key code for them. And then that key code is gonna allow them to check in on their own. We call this hassle-free check-in. They can check in at 11 o'clock at night if they want. No one has to be here to help them. The other option is one of these little lock boxes. We have both as a backup just in case. We tend to not ever give this out, that's the goal. Um, but if the battery died in this lock or something happened with it, they still would have another way in. But we generate pin codes for them and the pin code expires when they leave. So it's always different for everyone, which means no one's gonna have access to the house when they shouldn't, which is great. And then the third thing that you might wanna put in as automation is concerned is one of these little doorbells. You can use a ring doorbell or a nest doorbell. Um, and this is optional, but it helps because you're able to see that your guests arrived okay. Um, you can also kind of monitor how many people are coming in and out. You can't have any cameras inside, obviously, that would be cool. Um, but, you know, one on the front door to actually make sure the pest company is coming, the pool company is coming, the property manager is coming. It just allows some peace of mind and know that your guests are taken care of. And then the last thing on the list, number four, to make this passive with Airbnb is you're gonna need to hire a property management company. Now, a property manager, they are in charge of everything. You can even have them handle booking for you as well if you want. They run you about $100 to $150 a month or even up to $200 a month, just depends. We pay ours about $140. They handle everything. They get the cleaning company, the pest control, the pool cleaning. Um, so we have a pool out there. We actually hire our own pool company because it was a little bit more cost effective for us, but you can have them take care of that as well. And we are in Florida, so we have a pest company that comes out and they spray the perimeter of the house, keeps all the bugs out, um, so that's good. You, you need that in some places. But a property management company is absolutely crucial to making sure this works. When the house is unrented, they come through, they make sure everything is fine, flush the toilets, run the water so that the, the traps aren't empty, and um, that'll make sure like no like uh, sewage gas is coming up. And when there are people here, they come in the day of check-in, they make sure that the house looks good, when they're checking in so that you have no issues at all. They're here before they get here. Um, when they leave, they come, they send cleaners here. So a cleaning company is very crucial. If you want to automate this whole thing, that's what we did. That costs about $125 per stay. 
So that's really good. They come, they clean the whole place up. Property manager comes back, they check it over, they make sure everything is good to go, and they check for damages. So that is absolutely crucial to making this thing run like clockwork. And like I said, you can even have them handle bookings for if you want. We do the bookings ourselves right now, um, but we're, we are gonna look into maybe having them take that over as well to help us get some extra bookings because as I'll talk about in the pros and cons of this coming up here, um, there are some inconsistencies with that. All right, so I do wanna not sugarcoat anything. I wanna tell you about the cons of this method and then I'll talk to you about the pros of this method. But if you've enjoyed this video so far, please smash a like on it. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not subscribed here and you like this kind of stuff, you wanna learn more about passive income. I talk a lot about passive income on this channel. You should drop below and subscribe and hit that bell notification icon to get notified of future videos. Let's talk about the cons of doing this whole business model. Model. The biggest con is that the income is inconsistent. So you can check back on some of my previous videos. I'll try and leave a card on it, but there have been months where we've had the entire month booked out and we've earned really good money, like $6,000 plus. And then there's been months like last month where we've had zero people in, nobody. So the income is very inconsistent with this, especially when you're first starting off, you don't have reviews on the property and it, it can be kind of tough to get people in. That could be where you have your property manager step in. That's what we're going to do to help out with getting the property booked. The next thing is, is that people just do not care about your stuff. From the renters, the property manager, the cleaners, the people coming in, the contractors, no one is gonna care for your house like you are. So you have to keep that in mind. There are gonna be damages, there are gonna be things that when you come, you're gonna have to fix and repair. So. It's not gonna be completely 100% passive, but while you're away, obviously, if it's rented, that's gonna be passive income because you're not there working. But when you come back, you're gonna have things that you're probably gonna have to do. And then the last thing, the last con is house parties. It's a big problem with short-term rentals. We see it all the time in our community. People come and they throw house parties. So there's some things that you can do to try and minimize that risk. Uh, the first would be to put a limit on how many days they have to stay, a minimum rental. I would recommend like four or five days because that's probably going to eliminate most of the people who would be booking the house for just like the two day weekend or even Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That'll probably eliminate most of those problems for you. And then the other thing that you can do is just be careful about booking to locals. Like if you see they live, you know, a half hour away, they're probably booking your house for a house party. So let's talk about the pluses of this business model because like I said, there are cons, but there's also pluses. And obviously it could be some pretty passive income for you. Um, if you can get the house rented, you're gonna have passive income flowing in, especially if you have a property manager that's handling most of it for you. And if you have a property that you can get rented, frequently that's going to be passive income flowing in next is is it can be a huge plus if you pick a property where you actually want a vacation in like us we've been vacationing here anyways so we've been coming down here and we've been renting properties for two or three months out of the year so this is a big plus actually having our own house that we can come to whenever we want and it's just a huge plus for us because now we have our own place. Those of you who watched one of my last videos, you probably saw how I forgot the keys to our bedroom. We block off one of our bedrooms here. I fixed that lock. <laughs> but one tip that you can do if you wanna do the same thing in your rental property is just get a little sign that says owner's closet, do not enter, lock it off and now they don't know, they just think it's a closet and you've got your own place to stay when you come to your vacation property. The other cool part about short-term rental is you can demand higher prices than you can with long-term renters because people are gonna be willing to pay $200, $300 a night and that can add up quick if you can get a lot of renters in versus if you're doing long-term rental, you know, $700, $900, $1,000 a month, um, you just, you could make a lot more with short-term rental if you're in the right area and getting bookings coming in. And they also, another plus is that typically you're not gonna have as many problems because with long-term renters, you have to worry about evicting them if they're bad tenants. You're stuck with them for a long time if they're bad tenants potentially and potentially more damages when they leave because if they get mad at you, they could pour concrete down the drains. You just don't know what they're gonna do. With short-term renters, you're stuck with them for only a short amount of time, four or five days. They're out of your hair, they're gone if they're a bad tenant, and uh, at least they're paying you premium prices. Anyways, guys, that is the video. That is how to make passive income on Airbnb. Again, if you liked it, smash the like on this video, subscribe, tick that bell notification icon. I've got lots of cool tutorials coming up, and drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Until next time, guys, I am Paul James. We'll see you in the next video. Peace out.